Okay, today's video is about 2 by 72 belt grinders. There is so much stuff out there revolving around this. What you should do, what you shouldn't do, what will work, what won't work. There's, there's just a ton of stuff, guys. Go out there and look at it. What I want to focus on today is I have, I want to talk about the, the grinder I have. Uh, I want to talk about the current setup that I have with this grinder and then I want to change my motor and my variable speed controller to uh, I'll show you I'm, I'm gonna unbox it but I'll show you what I got this is the mini dictator grinder uh, there's a from what I see this this company's got a bad rap with these grinders I've been pretty happy with mine I made a couple modifications I think in a last video I made it to where my work rest would pivot out what we'll talk about and try to just focus on I'm going to try to keep my opinion and stuff out of it certain DC motors are okay what I would say is treadmill motors any any motor that is not a totally enclosed fan cooled motor just get rid of the idea of it don't even think about it. It's not going to last, and the effort you're going to put into it is not going to. You're going to be midstream, and then all of a sudden you're down. Your 2x72, in my opinion, is the most critical tool. You can get away with a lot of other things in the shop. But I will say, I did. I bought a totally enclosed fan cooled motor. Uh, it's a DC motor. I wired and built this out of a bridge rectifier and some other stuff. Uh, it it's got an RPM gauge. The sensor is picking up how many times the, the little magnet goes, spins around it on the fan. It is pretty close to the seven inch drive I have over here that's pretty close to a seven inch fan. So it's pretty much the revolutions of my drive wheel. But anyway, uh, I also added this work light. This doesn't come with this. The motor, our totally enclosed fan cooled two horsepower motor that spins at uh, 1,750 RPMs, all right? I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna show y'all what we're fixing to put on here, all right? Uh, we're, we're going away from DC and we're moving to AC. Okay, so I did a spark test real quick. Um, I'm ready to do the comparison later. So this is it. We'll just open this thing up. And if you don't notice, uh, I'm using like a, a lineman's knife here. Uh, so I know what this is. This is a uh, an additional tooling arm. Uh, the, one, the model I have uses the aluminum tool arms. Uh, they're not too expensive. They come pre-drilled for most of the tools that they have. So that's, I'll show you all why this is important here a little bit. So we've got the tooling arm. Uh, smaller box in here. Those are all the small wheels. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think the smallest one is a half. It might be a 0.75. I don't know, but there's that. Okay, it's throwing me for a loop. Hey, sometimes you just think simple. I was like, this is on the wrong side. Let's flip it over. Duh. So, there's the uh, small wheel attachment. All right, let's see how to open this up. This is the part that is probably the most exciting for me. Because like some of y'all, um, having this is, is a dream. And for me, it's finally coming true. You don't know what this is. This is a... A... Uh, variable speed controller but I also got a two horsepower motor 
I need to save more. Let me get this out of the box and then we'll get the box out of the way and do a better shot. Alright, so this is what we ended up getting. I've got a WEG NEMA Premium uh, 2 horsepower motor, uh, 3 phase motor. Of course, it's 3 phase because that is what the variable speed controller also does. Uh, and this is currently wired. I had it pre-wired and ready for 110. I don't have 220 in the shop, but the good news is I'm ready for 220 in the event that uh, I get 220 in the shop. So uh, this controller is pretty pretty popular. It's one of the best ones out there. I, and then I've got the small wheel attachment that I get to enjoy that as well that's going to help take the place of my rotary platen for the most part but what i'm going to do now guys is i'm going to pull it out we're going to get over there and and uh, i'm going to pull off my old motor pull off the old light and then hook up this new one hopefully there's no issues okay Got the new motor mounted. Uh, I still I gotta find some more screws, but at least as of now I can access them. So the reason why I'm stopping real quick, uh, I've got a lot smaller drive wheel on. Uh, I've had I was running a seven inch drive wheel, but mm, bore size. I thought that this was the right bore size. I think it's a half inch bore. I think uh, looks and this is a three quarter or this is an inch I, I don't know what no matter what I got the wrong bore size now to get lucky I went through a lot of wheels in my time I think this is from my original DC treadmill motor I had gotten this one so luckily I had something that fit before I do that. So I'm currently plugged into an extension cord that goes inside my house. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. I found this. This is my this is my paperwork that came with it. Uh, I'm in this chart here that my thumb is by. And it's got two other um, jumper placements for a standard GFCI. I think I was saying GCFI earlier, but GFCI. Um, and then a sensitive one. So, I open this box up. Uh, it says J12. There's a marking for J12. Uh, we'll get y'all in and focus there. Oh, there's going to be a wire right in our way. So, marking for J12. I don't want to touch this too much. It is still powered on. Or it's got power applied to it. Marking for J12 right under my finger right here. I had moved it to the standard GFCI. Uh, it was still tripping my GFCI. I moved it to the sensitive GFCI. Still tripping my breaker. I was then a little bit concerned because this came pre-wired. I was hoping that there wasn't an issue in that regard so I did check everything I am wired for 110 as requested um, I walked through some of the sheet and everything is right it's just apparently I have a super sensitive GCFI GFCI let me close this box up let me uh, get set up again and then I'll go through some thoughts and some other stuff I'll do the next spark test and then y'all will get to see them kind of side by side. I may put that other one in after before so you can see kind of a before and after. Uh, I got to figure out how to do a side by side. Guys, I'm having too many of these moments. I thought I did this right and then I did it wrong and I'm like, crap, I'm going to have to do that. I just was panicking over something as easy to fix. As that just was. <laughs> Don't be like me, guys. Think things through. All right, we're now set up again. We're ready to do a spark test. Um, I've I've only turned it up to speed. Uh, tracked the belt, got it going. 
guys my first my first thought about this is it's moving faster uh, it's moving faster granted this is a 2600 rpm motor so we know that it is moving faster like that's hands that we get that uh, with the variable speed drives and the DC motor and the 1750 at the other one but there's a key thing here uh, we also drop down to a three inch drive wheel versus the seven inch drive wheel so I still think it's faster than that seven inch drive wheel I don't know the math seven inch drive wheel at 17 50 rpms on the shaft and I, I just don't know the math with three quarter inch shaft somebody can might tell me one day but this I think this is just moving so much faster than the other one was spark test will let us know so let's get into it let's throw some spark same piece of uh, I think this is Mm, it's spring steel. It was a leaf spring. That's what this was. So could be 5160. Might not be 5160. But it was a leaf spring. So let's fire this thing up and let's do another spark test and see how she goes. So, all in all, um, I'm happy with it. AC motor, even though they're both two horsepower motors, I think it's got a lot to do with how you do the variable frequency in this case versus the variable speed with a potentiometer and a bridge rectifier and I think maybe one other thing. A bit of, it's a big difference, guys. The, it's got a lot more torque. I could genuinely I don't have a readout that's reading the the rpms but I could pretty easily drop it by 500 rpm just by pushing in I could not tell that I was slowing it down as much as I would before on the DC motor uh, it, it that two horsepower had a lot more uh, torque to it. it it feels a lot better uh, overall I'm, I'm happy with with moving up to this level of a motor and an actual uh, VFD but as far as this video is concerned AC versus DC motor when it comes to 2x72 belt grinders if you can get the AC motor do it if you can't do it make sure no matter what you do it's totally enclosed fan cooled and and you'll say and you can get by like i said i ran that other motor for four years now for four years i've ran that motor three and a half four years uh, do what you can do but always remember that that there's a reason why there are other things and i don't know why nobody's done a straight up there are a few people that say it but it i tested it all done it all i'm just saying if you can do it do it go ac uh, 220 is probably even more preferred because i think i'm not even getting the full two horse out of this because i'm running 110 it's worth it so i'm super happy uh, i look forward to to the next video <laughs> y'all think i was gonna let y'all get away with not seeing the uh Small wheel attachment. These things make your life a little bit easier. So if you've watched some of my videos, I'm gonna spin you around. You may recognize my central machine, Harbor Freight. Uh, I don't know what those are called. Spindle, what you know. I've done a lot of, and it's been great guys, but for the cost of that, for the cost of that is being 
the same cost roughly as this the tooling arm the small wheel attachment and the five wheels that I got for close to the same cost you get a lot more performance because a you've got a lot better motor a lot better setup you got a lot more control I think it took me all of 15 seconds to clean up this finger groove like like seriously 15 seconds and I was running this thing slow I don't I, well, I'm still on it I'm at 30 on this thing so at 30 super slow super controlled super clean got it cleaned up and done uh, guys there's a reason why I, I'm just gonna say it people forget to say things like do this there are other ways to get around things and do that if you have to but in this case get the small wheel attachment um, it's it makes doing that stuff so much it's already made it so much easier and so much nicer and you get a lot more control that other one is full speed all the time so whenever I've got uh, wood on here now and I need a little bit more control I've got it that uh, it's just amazing guys all right until next time.